Welcome back. In this video, we'll take a look at how to vectorize data, particularly text data. Now, I've already done a video on this, but in the time since I've done it, there's been so much change in AI. So many things have evolved from the work that OpenAI and Google are doing all the way to even Pinecon's databases and the way that they're managed to sort of reflect the changes in the way that we think of AI. And I'll touch more on those changes towards the end of the video. But in this video, we're going to take a look at how to manage text data within a Pinecon database. So we're going to take it step by step. We'll take a look at how to vectorize text data. Then we'll take a look at how you can can efficiently upload it using the new serverless framework that Pinecon offers and then finally how you can retrieve it and then we'll look at integrating that into your own custom GPTs and exactly how that works. Let's go ahead and jump in. To get you started as quick as possible I've gone ahead and set you up with the complete source code that you'll need to follow along with this video and set up your text embedding server. All you need to do to get access to that code is click the very first link in the description. This will open up a Replit page like this one and all you want to do is log in or sign up to Replit if you don't yet have an account it's completely free and then you want to fork this replit and once you're done with that the next page you'll be taken to will look something like this and so we're going to make use of this page for the rest of this tutorial all right cool so once we're done with that we need to sort out the pinecon stuff now if you're watching this video you probably already have a pinecon account if you don't have one you just sort of want to create one once your account is created you come to a page that looks like this now i already have some databases here in most cases chances are you don't have one if you've created a new account all you want to do is you want to create a new index so an index basically stores the data within your pinecon database you want to give it a name and then you want to choose the dimensions now i usually choose this setup by model option in this case you get a chance to select which model you actually want to use there are different use cases for these different models i haven't found any model that's particularly better than the text embedding 3 at large in the past when we're still using the text embedding ada 002 mistral embed was probably better than it back then but now the text embedding 3 large i think for me has sort of outperformed pretty much any other model in any use case so all you want to do is you want to select that and then select set configuration up here you want to enter your index name and just just to make sure you understand how this works it's gonna assign dimensions over here and a measurement for those directions cosine and 3072 is the setting that you need for the text embedding 3 large other models have different setups in here so you can see over here mr uses 124 cosine as well but in this case we're just gonna go ahead and stick with the embedding 3 large what you want to do is you want to scroll down and previously we didn't have this option we didn't have the serverless option you either have to select pods or if you're just on a starter account you just want to select the starter but in this case we're gonna go ahead and select server we want to select a cloud provider and then you want to select the region this is the part where if you're just signing up for a new account it's going to ask you to enter your payment details do not be worried to do that because the database that we're creating is actually charged on a per use basis and if you don't use the database that might they're not going to charge you pretty much anything but if you are actually planning to use it what you want to do is you want to take a look at this pricing page over here which i will have linked as well that lets you know exactly how much pinecon is going to charge you for everything that you do within that particular database once you're done naming your index over here the create index option will become available you can click create index and then it should create an index for you like this one over here so what you can see here is that i have my index and it's already called pinecon tutorial i've set it up the way we talked about setting it up and now we just need a bunch of information from this page to take into our next part of the tutorial the very first thing that we need to know is the api key for the account so chances are you don't have an api key here all you want to do is create a new api key give it a name it's going to go ahead and create that for you with that specific name and then you're going to be able to copy the value of the api key here you just want to go ahead and copy that and then you want to head back to the database that you've created as well and you just want to copy its name that's really the only information that you need going forward the second piece of information that we need is an open ai api key and all you want to do to get that is you want to head over to platform.openai.com playground head to the bottom over here select api keys make sure you have an account connected make sure you have better api key names than mine over here and then you just want to create a new secret key give it a name make sure it's assigned to you instead of a service account unless you want to do service account stuff select a project and give it complete permissions to everything and then create the api key and just keep it handy for the next step as well back in our forked replit over here we just want to enter that information and then we can start the database running and we can also understand exactly how this pinecon stuff is working what you want to do is on the left panel over here you want to scroll all the way to the bottom where it says tools and select the secrets option over here now inside of secrets i'll have two secrets here which will not come over to your replit once you clone my project they might have asked you for this in the beginning but you didn't have it back then you probably do right now you just want to enter two things one is your open ai api key the one that we just copied from the open ai playground and then your pinecon api key as well that we just took from the pinecon interface and once you have all that information in there we're pretty much ready to go except for one particular thing over here you just want to enter the index name my index name was pinecon dash tutorial yours might be something else and then also you can see over here you need to enter an environment name so let's head over to pinecon once again and all we want to do is want to come in here and we want to look for our environment you'll notice over here that i also have a variable for the 
environment and i'll just go ahead and remove that right now because the latest version of the pinecone client doesn't actually require you to use an environment variables they kind of got rid of environments overall and introduced something new called namespaces that i will show you shortly but you don't really need that anymore all you need to do right now is pretty much hit run and then you can run the project for the next few minutes i'll go through exactly how interacting with the pinecone database works now if you don't really want to know that because you really don't need to you can just literally use my code you can skip to the next section where i just show you how to actually use this server but there's really two main functions that help with interacting with the pinecone server the very first one over here is the save to pinecone function what this does like i said it takes in the raw the text string and an embedding vector so embeddings are these numbers over here that are used to store these values within a database they're also used for querying similar entries into the vector database that's really all it needs to be able to save an entry into the database and what it's using here is this upset function this is the main part over here it's upsetting an array of vectors and these vectors usually you have multiple entries in this case because we're just entering one item we really only have one item and what we need to do is we need to enter a dictionary over here that has one the id which is a unique identifier for this specific entry in this particular case you can see i'm just generating the current timestamp and then saving that as a string for the current entry if i head over to my pinecone database you see over here that it shows the id and that's actually the current timestamp or the timestamp when this particular entry was made the next step is we need to take a look at the values which are the actual vectors that are being used for this particular entry and then finally we need to save the metadata which is the raw original text so the values or the vectors cannot be used by a chat agent to sort of retrieve information from this entry if you want to do that you actually need to include the metadata which will include the original raw text for the particular entry that you're making to your database now finally over here we have namespaces which is a particularly new feature inside of pinecone what it does is it's basically like namespaces in other programming languages like c sharp and c plus plus it allows you to separate your entries so that queries and upsets that you make to a specific namespace are only concerned with that particular namespace so if you have an entry that's in a separate namespace it won't be returned and what that means is that the process of querying is significantly more efficient right because we're not querying unnecessary namespaces so you can have a single index right that has multiple namespaces to store different information for different say maybe books or different departments within your company that kind of thing that's pretty much the entire save to pinecone database now at this point i just do want to remind you if all this stuff seems particularly complicated i do want to point out that we are available to working with individuals and companies that are interested in integrating ai into either your personal life or the work that you're doing we've worked on multiple projects and built multiple different ai systems and have experience in doing that so if you're interested in integrating ai into either your personal life or your business or a project that you're building be sure to check out our link in the description see if we are a fit for the work that you want to do and then book a meeting for us and we can sort of see how to figure that out so now we've taken a look at the save to pinecone functionality now we need to take a look at how we retrieve information from the pinecone database and this happens over here in this function called query similar text so here in this case we're using index.query we're passing in the vector embedding that we want to retrieve for so this is going to be a set of numbers that contains data that shows what you're looking for from the database we're passing in the top k which is basically how many entries do you want to retrieve do you want to include values so do you want to include the actual embeddings for this data that we're retrieving now in most cases you probably don't need this unless you're running some code that actually uses these values you probably want to leave this value over here as false but there are certain situations where you probably want to have it true and then over here we have the include metadata option over here which this will include the text which is really important if you're working with a custom gpt or a chatbot and then of course we have the namespace over here so that we can query things for specific namespaces those are the two functions that are involved in actually getting and adding data to the vector database let's go ahead and run the server and then we'll take a look at the functions that are involved when it comes to actually saving and retrieving the data because it's slightly more complicated than that now we actually have our server running inside of replit all we want to do is you just want to head over to the right panel over here and make sure you have the web view open here the web view will probably show you something like not found you don't need to worry about that you just want to click on this new tab button over here and this will open up a page in a new tab and you just want to copy this link this url within the address bar head over to pinecone and this is the address that we're going to be querying now pinecone is really useful for testing out servers and that's exactly what we're using it for in this particular case all right so now i have my replit server sort of side by side with my postman installation over here what we want to start by doing is we want to understand exactly how adding information to the database works using the url that we initially copied and pasted in here what we want to do is we sort of want to start by running this add underscore db endpoint to the left over here you can sort of see that this is a post endpoint so i've got it set up as post it retrieves everything within the json data which we are going to put inside of the body but we need to set it up as a json format over here using this drop down to the right over here and then in here we can enter pretty much any information the important thing to note is that 
that the information that you enter over here is basically going to be converted into a JSON string and then it's going to be uploaded in that exact format to the Pinecorn database. So previously I had entered item name over here. Now I'm just going to enter something like fruit name and then I'll save this as something like orange okay now usually if you're for example embedding a book or a pdf or something which i will record future videos on that so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that this would be something grossly different but we'll sort of talk about exactly how you can do that later on and then what i want to do now is i just want to send this over to the database we can sort of see it working over here it's actually logged that it's been successful and then over here it says that the text message was added successfully how exactly did this work within the server so what really happened in the server is essentially we received the information we converted into a json string then we use the get embedding vector function over here which uses the text embedding three large to convert this into actual embeddings that can be stored within the pinecorn database once we have both of those we basically send both the text and the embedding vector to the save to pinecorn function well now we have an idea on how to add data the question is how do we actually retrieve it and now we use a different endpoint over here called retrieve underscore db what we really need over here this is actually a get endpoint not a post so you just want to make sure that you say that correctly and you can see over here we're actually taking this information out of the parameters so instead of params over here you can sort of add a parameter called text that you can see we're using over here in this case i'm setting its value as micro and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to send that over to the server it's going to work with the pinecon and you can see it has retrieved both of our entries the only reason it's done that is because the pinecon database actually only has two entries so it has the previous entry that i set up while i was testing and then the new entry that we've set up on this video and it's sort of set up to actually retrieve five entries so it's going to retrieve pretty much everything because there's only only two entries within the database and again really quickly how that's working is we're sort of reading the text that the user enters we're using the get embedding vectors function over here to convert it to an embedding vector and then we're using the query similar text function over here to actually retrieve that information and then send it back the beauty of this is that once you have this server set up and you have this sort of link and access to all the endpoints that the server provides what you can do is you can actually start to add this to your custom gpt and we've sort of talked about this previously in custom gpt actually which I've given a full tutorial on how to set that up in a different video but once you have that URL you can use this as an endpoint within your custom GPT and it can be able to both retrieve and add data to your Pinecorn database alternatively you can sort of fill this database with company information and then use that same URL to set up a company chatbot or any other chatbot that should have specific information for something that it needs to do now at the beginning of the video I did mention that we've sort of had a change in the way we think about vectorization and this has happened because of one particular thing initially we sort of had large language models they are text models and we're mainly concerned with embedding and retrieving text information what has happened is that we've kind of shifted into this landscape of using multi models so models that use multi-model fusion and process multiple modalities in a single model so both the new gpt4 or model and the gemini model both of these are models that sort of use text audio images and video all in a single embedding function in that light it has become rather outdated to sort of deal with text embeddings in the fashion that we used to and so a bunch of things have changed in that light to help us move forward what i'm going to do is in my next videos i'm going to talk about how we can deal with embedding in this new multi-model landscape we'll talk about how you can mix different embeddings into a different database and be able to query them all at the same time and how you can organize those queries so that you only retrieve the most useful information if you're interested in that be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that content now thanks a bunch for watching of this video it has been super insightful if so be sure to scroll down give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and i will catch you in the next video peace out